my net worth accumulation after 27 years, and 27 years is when I actually sold my practice for the second time. So when I was harvesting the equity from my practice sale, um, the second time when I sold it for all cash, I realized then when I calculated my net worth that my net worth from practice equity here was about 20% of what my total, total net worth was. Where did the rest of it come from? It came from real estate that I had been building up on a very disciplined, no fast track, but disciplined approach over those years. As I told you, I compounded leveraging into strong assets, which is real estate, paid down the debt. Most of the debt was paid down by the tenants. I added to it instead of putting money in my 401k and look what I ended up with. Most people think that their practice is gonna be like their final piece of wealth or net worth that gets them to retire. I don't think you can count on that anymore today, even if you could in the past. Certainly I couldn't. So when I sold my practice, I had more net worth in my real estate than I had in the practice, even though the practice was the income generator. I could now switch gears and rely more on the wealth I'd created because I had the passive cash flow generated on a regular basis, which I didn't have to go to work for every day. See, that's the key to freedom, is having passive cash flow, annuity income that allows you to have more time off. Doesn't mean you have to sell your practice or get out. I've got many members and freedom founders that are building their plan B right now because they want the option, just the option to take time off with their families and not feel like they have to be under the gun, working four days a week, you know, 48 weeks out of the year just to pay the debt, pay the taxes. Because realize when you're in active income mode, you're paying the highest marginal tax rate that you can pay. Real estate, tangible assets, passive income is taxed on a much lower basis. So right there is a big game changer. Don't miss that point. So the state of the market, where are we in the market today? Well, let's think about it. We have this major unprecedented stimulus. Um, we had it back in 2008 at a, at a nominal degree to get out of the Great Recession. Now we've had COVID and the stimulus has been uh, on steroids, about 10 times what we had back in 2008. Rising inflation because of the stimulus. Uh, you can't print digital money, hand over fist like their government's doing and not have inflation. So it's coming, we're feeling it right now. That's gotta be a big concern to most people because most people have not experienced inflation. Unless you grew up and were active in the 70s, uh, then you don't really know what that was. You have to go back and read about the 70s inflation actually called stagflation. Talk a little bit more about that as we go through. Rising taxes. Well, along with massive debt stimulus printing, our government's in, in debt head, you know, hand over fist. We're ba basically a bankrupt country. The only thing that lets us survive is that we have the reserve currency. We're the, we're the, we're the best of the worst in, this, in the world today. That's all we got going for us. And I don't know how long that's going to last. I mean, honestly, we, are, we, have, we have crossed the Rubicon in so many ways. I pray for our country that we can turn it back around. Not so much for me, but I worry about our kids and grandkids. And I think you do too. It's, it's a different dynamic. All right, what else? Well, we've got this red hot stock market, which is what I call the, 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 the what's happened out of what I call hot money. Hot money which is all the stimulus money that the government's pushed out there uh, in, in massive amounts to stabilize the economy. Hot money means you have asset bubbles. And we certainly see it in the stock market today and to some degree in real estate. But what I know is I can, you can better calculate and mitigate risk in the inefficient market of real estate than you can in the stock market all day long. The stock market has massive volatility. Well, just think about last year with COVID. Uh, the stock market dropped in just a few weeks, uh, uh, like 30 plus percent. Now it came back up again, but why? Well, the government came and, and, and poured money into the system. How many more times do you think the government, the Fed can do that? See, I think they've got run out of ammo. So the next time we have a, a bump in the road, a correction, I look for, for a fallout. If you go back to the seventies, that era that I talked about where we had very strong inflation until Paul Volcker came in in 1982 and knocked it back down again, that period of inflation Look at what the stock market did. The stock market was extremely anemic during that period of time. I mean, it did virtually nothing over a period of, of, of a decade or more. It was very anemic. So the returns that we've felt or seen in the past eight, nine years with that bull run market that we've had stimulated by all the, all the helicopter money the Fed's put out is likely going to pay a a price in the stock market when we hit inflation. So no one has a magical crystal ball. I just want people to understand that, that again, what's got you to where you are potentially has a lot of risk in the models going forward. Inflation has not been a friend of the stock market.